Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So let me ask you a question. Are you a fan of the Dragonite class? Doesn't matter if it's Stamina or Magicka, but are you a fan? If the answer to that question is no, just click off this video. If the answer is yes, well, this is going to be the most broken expansion ever for the Dragonite. We are going to go over all the changes that is going to make this class an absolute apex predator in the upcoming meta. So without further ado, fellas, let's get into it. So let's go ahead and start with the biggest bombshell in the PTS is dynamic scaling of your weapon and spell ability. So player abilities that scale with your offensive stats, such as weapon damage and maximum stamina will now dynamically scale with the highest of your offensive stats. Meaning if it's a stamina morph and your spell damage is super, super high, well, it's also going to buff that. So what this allows you to do, any class that is lacking, let's say, for example, on the Dragonite, which we will be discussing today, it lacks an execute. Well, you have a dual bullet execute and now you have a two handed execute, which we'll go over in just a moment. Some classes kind of lack an innate way to heal over time, kind of like the Magic of Sorcerer on my No Ward Max Work build. I won't be running Resolving Vigor and Rapid Regen for my healing. You know, so anything that your class is lacking, now you have access to. Yes, it's still going to cost your opposite pool. So this is going to lead into some huge theory crafting ideas. I myself have been on the PTS hours on end trying to figure out what's going to work best with the classes that I really like. I encourage you guys to do the same. Hop on the PTS and I give it a go. So what we're going to go over today is the amount of damage that the Dragonite can now put out. OK, so the Dragonite used to be you have to kind of soften up your opponent get them down to oh, no, about 70 75 percent health before you go in for your elite combo into your molten whip combo into it and hopefully they die by that right well now guys you can fully do a combo from 100 to zero on the magic of dragonite because now you have access to an execute which the dragonites really didn't have before no one was running dual wield well not excuse me it, it, no one was running two handers well, now you can, guys, and your damage really doesn't fall off whatsoever. So let's take a look at the Dragonite here, for example. So let's go ahead and talk about a little bit why the Dragonite is going to be really, really broken and is quite frankly just unbeatable on the PTS, and unless you're a Magplar, obviously. But so the changes to Burning Embers. So now what Burning Embers does, 100% of the damage it does, and now it gives you a healing over time effect of that. Now. This is kind of a buff and a nerf in its own because a lot of people, a lot of the top mag DKs will actually time their burst around burning embers falling off of their target. Meaning when you go in for your burst, you let you just go balls deep, right? Balls to the walls for your burst combo. Sometimes you got to risk it for the biscuit and you rely on that burning embers buff to fall off to give you a massive heal. Whenever you see DKs go from like 10% health all the way up to 100% health, that's because Burning Embers has been ticking this entire time and it's finally dropped off. So I always time my burst, or at least I try to against a really good player around the tail end of my Burning Embers because if they want to counter initiate or they block my leap combo or they fossilize me or whatever, somehow they block my combo and then counter initiate, you're probably gonna die. Well, with Burning Embers falling off, during the midst of that, you're probably not going to die. Even if you're completely CC'd, you're going to get like a 10, 15 K burst seal. Now you don't have that luxury. So in that regard, it is a nerf. So that's like some elitist junk you guys usually don't have to worry about. But what you guys should be really concerned with is the healing over time from this. This is pretty good. So the more dot damage you do, the more healing you're going to do. Plus burning embers, you can put this on stamina build as well. This is a really nice heal over time. You pair this with resolving vigor, cauterize, you're going to have a nice beefy way to keep your health capped off and not drop below 50 25 percent you know spamming rally vigor all the time so um this is a small but really good change for the magic of dragon knight you will have to change up your play style a little bit but to kind of compensate you know especially my play style but let's not get into burning embers that's just one small thing i want to talk about now the changes to execute so let's go ahead and kind of take a look um at some damage numbers uh, when it comes to uh, Molten Whip, so Molten Whip around 20k, this is a fully buff, this goes up to like 22, and then when you have Continuous Attack and everything rolling you guys saw in the thumbnail, you can get this bad boy up to 27k, right? So this can hit really, really hard if you spec it out right. But when you take a look at the damage of Executioner, this does 
a metric crap load of damage now because of the dual world passives. So now this is dynamically scaling off your spell damage. And on this build, I'm not exactly sure what the spell damage gets up to. We'll uh, we'll, we'll check it here. Just uh, kind of take a look. See, so we're at a 6,800 spell damage, uh, which is going to buff all of your stamina morphs as well, right? And this will go up even further in continuous attack, probably up to like 7,500, right? So the damage this will do, uh, this will go up to like 5,600, uh, something like that, 5,800, whatever, uh, almost 6K with continuous attack. This allows you to throw in an entirely new spell into your burst combo. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. It used to be you could not 100 to 0 anyone. I mean, you just couldn't because everyone's around 30k health. You're just super tanky. But guys, if you have all of your buffs debuff on your opponent, well, the only thing you have to do is line up a heavy attack into a leap, molten whip, boom, executioner. That's all you have to do. A heavy attack, which you also have passes for the heavy attack. If you guys are unfamiliar with two-hand, which I was up until this point, right? Of what the two-hand actually did, because uh, up until this point, I never even thought about using this as a weapon type. But now you can, because there's such great viability on the BTS. I'm absolutely in love with it. So you have a heavy weapons, which is going to increase your spell and weapon damage, obviously, by about 300. But when you complete a fully charged heavy attack, this is going to increase the damage of your next... Uh, Drake damage ability by 10%. This is going to buff Molten Whip, okay? So your Molten Whip's going to be hitting hard as Fook or Execution or whatever Drake damage ability you decide to use after it, right? So, what I'm trying to get out of this video is show you guys that the burst on the Dragon Knight Stamina Magicka is really nutty right now. It is scary, scary good. And I hate to be that guy that plays the flavor of the month class but you know Dragonite is going to be one of the top classes there is and what I really like about these changes is that it makes a relatively hard class like the Dragonite I, I know you guys don't light me up in the comments oh Dragonite's easy Dragonite's easy well you put the Dragonite in the hands of a newer player well you're going to get squished this kind of lowers the level gap between the newer players the casuals the average players the veterans the elias whatever so it's kind of leveling out everyone on the same playing field which i really really do like this change and you can get really nutty with some of the combos even if you wanted to do like a bombing build spin to win with a dual wheel and uh, um, when you put on dual wheel for example if you wanted to use a, a spin to win combo on the dragon knight which you definitely can when you're going in for your burst combos especially with something like plague break or something of that nature your damage actually goes up with dual wheel not much compared to the two-handed and even the uh the inferno staff you won't compare numbers but the uh, dual worlds will give you the most bang for your buck the two-hander is going to give you access to an execute which is so much needed on the dragon knight i cannot tell you how many times i've had someone down to 20 percent health and you just can't kill them especially if they're a vampire and their undeath passive is continuously procking you just can't kill them well now you can and one other thing I want to mention is that the foods that you're going to want to use, I don't think a lot of people are going to be using Bewitch Sugar Skulls anymore. What you're going to have to worry about in this upcoming patch is if you want to hybridize, you need to worry about your sustain, your, your resource pool management. Not necessarily stacking a lot into that resource pool because the way the dynamic scaling works again is going to be off of your highest stat no matter what that is whether it be spell damage max magic you know whatever so whatever you choose just put everything into it that you possibly can okay get it as high as you freaking can and then anything else with the build just work on your recoveries that's why i'm pretty sure everyone's going to be running the smoke bear haunts so this gives you the maximum health as well as stamina and magic of recoveries that's why i'm currently running right now on my dragonite and you guys know i survived just fine with 750 recovery right but now look at our recoveries everything unbuffed is 1200 1000 you pop a pot right so it's 1500 this is way 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 more magica recovery and stamina recovery than you ever going to on dragonite which is really good this is going to allow you to not be punished for playing a certain way this is going to allow you to actually learn how to play your class um i really like this build i come up with if you guys are interested in seeing this build um i can leave a link to it down uh, in the description maybe i'll put like a private video for my members but uh maybe i'll put out a community post um let you guys know what i'm running um the stats do seem really low but again guys you saw we got up to like 6900 spell damage and this can go up to 7500 spell damage and that's gonna buff all your healing across the board right 
Now, like champion points wise, this is going to be really interesting as well because anything uh, like Deadly Aim and Master's Arms, for example, uh, this is also going to buffer your executes and just kind of whatever you want to run. Now, if you want to play like the Dragonite, kind of like a uh, like a pseudo tank, you know, running you know Flame Lash and Talons, you can still get away with that. But it's really hard to slot all this on your bars. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm just rambling right now. Uh, if you guys made it to the, this portion of the video, I really appreciate you. I really do. But man, there is just not enough <laughs> skill slots to put what I want on this build. Um, there's a few other things to note. Molten Armament, um, Armament excuse me, is going to be uh, really, really good as well. Because your heavy attack from the dual build is going to do a metric shit ton of damage when you land a heavy attack with this. So now that's also one more change to keep note instead of people running um, degeneration for your major sorcery buff. Uh, this actually gives you both of them brutality uh, and a sorcery. So it doesn't matter if your stamina or magicka. This is going to work really well for you if you're going to uh, heavy attack a lot. Which you should probably get in the habit of doing so. So if you run a restoration staff on a stamina build, you're going to be able to get a lot of resources back. And not only that, you get access to major mending for completing a heavy resto attack. So don't be surprised if you see a lot of stamina builds rocking a resto staff. It's actually really good now. It's especially super viable with rapid regen. All you stamina boys out there, I'm going to tell you right now, if you rock rapid regen, get used to you never, ever, ever getting your dang heal it's going to go to a mud crab it's going it's going to go to a random teammate you can't even see in stealth over here so get in the habit of just accepting that as your fate unlike vigor well vigor only healed you right so rapid regen um it is definitely a dual edged sword this this skill uh, now there are some other changes uh, minor ones like volatile armor um this uh, dot did go down substantially and went down by like 30 percent just because this is now based off of your maximum health um, but this spell is also really good still yet yeah, because it pulls people out of stealth. Any other changes um, you really don't have to uh, worry about um, like for example engulfing flames in order to get the full 10% um, bolstered value for this ability you have to have your spell and weapon damage has to be over 9,000 so it's not over 9,000 right now. So we pop uh, our thing so this is uh, spell damage 4,800 uh, yeah anyway it'll get up to 10 percent is what i'm trying to say but uh i really think that's most of the changes i want to talk about the dragon knight so just to recap the burning embers is going to heal you you have dynamic scaling now which means your highest offensive stat is going to bolster all your abilities across the board besides a few mentioned kind of like the magicka wards like the magicka sorcerer wards it's not gonna buff those also a uh, power lash uh, no excuse me a power bass um, is another ability that's not necessarily going to buff but those are just a few niche abilities uh, to keep in mind but yeah guys let me know what you come up with down in the comments i'll be on the pts a lot so if you want a duel or whatever just gonna friend me in game and we'll have some friendly duels and there you craft some builds on screen that's what i plan on doing um coming uh, tuesday uh 4 p.m if you guys be ready for that i'm gonna be on the pts just theory crafting and dueling if you guys are down for that if i get enough people here to uh make it a uh, full day thing so yeah this has been horn crux apologies for all the rambling i just wanted to tell you about the dragon knight and what an absolute monster it's going to be and i really hope you guys have fun with the class and maybe you come up with some sort of counter meta to the meta if so let me know down in the comments this has been horn crux and before i go guys a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members without whom this channel would not be possible and before you actually tune out, guys, be sure you tell someone you love them. All right. Peace.